The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. Lord, As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, and how were you with your eyes open? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees a man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. So the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been, been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered, and you were born entirely in sins. And are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Well, Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I give over judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this, and said to him, Surely we are not blind. Are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Another lengthy Gospel reading today. <laughs> we 
Whitaker. Friends and Christ, grace and peace to this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to just close your eyes for a moment. To do that, close your eyes. Imagine. Imagine what it would be like to be blind. Blind from birth. Never to have been able to see the sky, the stars, the moon, the sun. Never to have seen a view from up on a mountaintop. Never to have seen the faces of your children or your spouse or the people that you dearly love. What would that be like? You can open up your eyes. What would that be like? I'm sure many of us maybe here at our Saviors this morning know someone who was born blind. And maybe they told you or expressed to you what that is like. But in our gospel reading for this morning, Jesus meets a man who had been blind from birth. And right away the disciples ask a question that most of us ask when we see something terrible. The disciples ask Jesus, why did this happen? I mean, isn't that a question that we often ask when something terrible happens? Why did this happen? Did you ask it after the terrorist attack in London this past week? And we saw on the television sets the terrible pictures of suffering and pain. And I'm guessing that many of us ask, why did this happen on that same day? Because up in a small town in northern Wisconsin near Wausau, small child, a small town of Rothschild, we saw the same kind of pictures. And we asked the same question, why did this happen? Or when a, a natural disaster occurs. You know, I remember when I was young, I'll never forget it, when a terrible tornado ripped through Barnwell, Wisconsin. For about 12 years ago, when that tsunami hit India and killed so many people. A few years ago, when that earthquake shook the island. Think about all the devastation that happened. Why did this happen? I mean, that's the one question that the disciples asked. Why did this happen? And they took it one step further. They got a little judgmental about it. And they asked, who sinned? That this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Was it this man or his parents? They were looking for a reason. I mean, that's a common reaction, isn't it? It's like Newton's third law of thermodynamics. For every action, there is an equal opposite reaction. That's a very common belief. You know, if I wouldn't have run that stop sign, then the police officer wouldn't be writing me a ticket right now. Or if I wouldn't have let my son or daughter go, a daughter go to that party, then they wouldn't be doing community service for underage drinking. I mean, if you do something bad, then something bad is going to happen to you. It's a common belief today. And that's what the disciples were asking. Who did what? It was an honest question. And notice that Jesus gave them an honest answer. Jesus said it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Imagine that, Jesus said. This is not about this man or his blindness or what he or his parents did or did not do. This is about something bigger. This is about God's greater plan. This happened so that the glory of God might be revealed. Now that's a thought, isn't it? That it's not all about us. It's not all about you and me, but somehow God has a bigger plan. 
I don't know whether you know the name Fanny Crosby or not, but Fanny, Fanny Crosby was one of the most prolific American hymn writers of the 19th century. She wrote over 9,000 hymns. Fanny Crosby was born blind. And one day, she was visited by a well-meaning minister who said, Oh, Miss Crosby, I think it's so sad that God did not give you your sight. And Fanny Crosby replied, If I only had one request, it would be to be born blind. Why? asked the minister. Well, because when I get to heaven, the first face that I will see will be the face of Jesus, my Savior. Now, I don't wish pain or heartache in any person's life. But sometimes things happen so that the glory of God can be revealed in us. Through the pain, our eyes are open and we get to see God. I know that many of you have experienced that in your life after maybe a death of a loved one. That in that moment, our eyes were opened and we saw the depth the height of God's love for us, God's promise. You see, friends, that's what happened to this blind man in our gospel reading for this morning. He met Jesus in his sadness, in his blindness, and his eyes were open. His blindness was healed. But do you see that really he was healed of his blindness twice? The first time Jesus spit and made the mud and the blind man went and washed in the pool of Siloam and he could see a true miracle. But the second time Jesus found him again, Jesus asked, do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you believe in the Messiah, the Christ? And the man asked, who is he, sir, that I might believe? And Jesus answered, you have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. And the man who was formerly blind fell down and worshipped him. Lord, I believe. I believe. There's a story about a 51-year-old man who was blind. But after a complicated surgery and operation, he could see, and it, it worked out for him. And this is what he had to say. He, he said, I never would have dreamed that yellow is so yellow. Uh -huh. I don't have the words, but I'm truly amazed by the color yellow. But red, red is my favorite color. I can't believe red either. And I can see the shape of the moon, and I like nothing better than seeing a jet plane flying across the sky, leaving that vapor trail. And of course the sun rises, and, and the sun sets. And at night, I look up at the stars, the sky, and the flashing lights. You would never know how wonderful everything is to be able to see. And so it is for you and for me. You know, I would never have known that God was so loving, so forgiving. But you see, Jesus has opened my eyes. I'm amazed that God would love me enough to send His Son, that His only begotten Son would die upon a cross for me. That the Son of God would take my sins upon Himself and die for them. I could never picture that kind of love until now. You see, it's a love, a love that is willing to be a part of God's greater plan. And friends in Christ, here at our Savior's Lutheran Church, as I leave you this week, let me ask you a question. What is your story of that kind of love? That kind of love that is going to be part of God's greater plan. Share it. Please share it with your loved ones. I mean, how many of you have ever been able to sit with a grandparent and they share that kind of story of love with you. I mean, isn't that what you carry on with? In their memory, in their legacy? So 
So share those stories with the loved ones around you. Share those stories with your church family. Your stories of faith, your stories of where God is evident in your lives. Remember that God is still loose in the world. God is here as we celebrate together. You know, so many people today think God is this God that created millions of years ago and now is non-existent. But God is loose in the world. Share your stories of faith. Profess with your lips that God has opened your eyes. For when we do that, friends, the world is never the same. It's never the same again. It has been so good to be with you for these past six months. I'm truly grateful, thankful, blessed. You see, six months ago, I, or seven months ago, I, I left a call of 16 years of a church that I dearly loved and continue to love. And I didn't know where I was going. But I knew that God was faithful and I knew that God would send me somewhere to be a part of a, a church home. And God sent me here to our Savior the church. And it seems like a lot longer than six months because I've gotten to know you and you've loved me and I've loved you and it's just, it's been wonderful. And I know that God right now is raising up a new pastor to lead this flock here. So have faith, have confidence, and love that person up just like you love me. God is faithful. God is good. And keep sharing your stories of faith. Because our St. Lutheran Church is a remarkable church. Good people, God's people. Thank you. Remember, when we share our faith, the world is never the same again. Praise be, O God.